reminding you this is in the context of the church in God's image. This is the kingdom purpose of the church to bring our minds to a, that renewed state, to that, to that, to that godly state, to the, to the mind of Christ. So Romans 12 and 2 says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Another translation says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So you can't know God's will for you until your mind has been transformed. So this scripture is telling us that it is a process. This renewal process is a process that changes how we think and then changes how we act. The Bible tells us that God's thoughts are higher than ours when we think like the world thinks. But when we think like God, sorry, when we think like God does by renewing our mind to God's word, we put on the mind of Christ. Therefore, our thoughts line up with the thoughts of God. His word and his thoughts are one and the same. As we study, meditate and speak God's word, we have a spiritual mind renewed to his word and led by his spirit. We actually come to think like God does. The more we renew our minds to the word, the more consistently we will think God's thoughts. And his thoughts are pure, lovely, honest, just, praiseworthy, virtuous, and pure. So we cast down wrong thoughts by speaking God's word and replacing wrong thoughts with scriptural thoughts. So I want to get more into renewal. What does renewal actually mean? Let, let's look at the dictionary. So it means to resume, to return to, to pick up again, to begin again, to start again, to reaffirm, to restate, to revive, to regenerate, to renovate, or to restore. What is God trying to restore us to or back to? What is he trying to reaffirm? What is he trying to resume? So why, would, why, do, why does our mind need to be restored? What, 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 what state is he trying to restore it to? So, so he, he knew us before we were formed. So our spirit was there and it was innocent before the fall, wasn't it? 100%. And Brother Hassim put it in the comment. That you is back to Eden. That, yeah. So this mind renewal is taking us back to pre fall. So why does God want to renew your mind? Pursuing the kingdom and the king's righteousness is not an intellectual pursuit. It is a mind transforming process of embracing God's original intent for mankind or for you. You can't be like him until you think like him. God is in the restoration business. He wants to restore us to factory or manufacturer settings. So remember, the last Adam came to reestablish the kingdom that Adam lost. So this is why our mind needs to be renewed. It's like when your computer gets a virus, what do you do? You restore it or your phone, you restore it to factory settings. God wants our mind to be restored back to pre-fall conditions because Adam was what? The son of God? Yeah, Adam was perfect. So God wants to restore our mind. So the church's job, training to reign. God's government, God's agency of taking people in this world and restoring them back to factory settings. That's the role that we play as being part of the church. That's the kingdom assignment because the church is not the kingdom. We are the governing body of God sent to transform this world, to take them and to renew and to restore their mind back to the mind that God gave us so that we can have dominion over this earth. So the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, 16, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So this, this carnal mind is never going to, is never going to have dominion. 
because the carnal mind is the is is the is the polluted state we took on when we were at the fall. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ means that Christians possess the Lord's own understanding. That is his thoughts, his opinions, his judgments, his plans, and so on. The answer to the question that Paul puts in the same verse, who hath known the mind of the Lord? The answer is, we do. The term we includes the Apostle Paul and to some extent all true believers. Though believers today are prudent to acknowledge that this doesn't mean we have a complete or perfect understanding. Also, there will always be others in the kingdom who will have a superior insight into some matters more than themselves. So we now, when we are taking on Christ, when we're in his word, when we are walking in the spirit, we can have the mind of Christ. We can start to, to operate and to walk in the power and authority. The kingdom is in what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Paul says, I didn't come to you with a great oratory or excellency of speech. I came in the demonstration of the power of God. And he could do that because he had the mind of Christ. He was being renewed daily and more and more progressively coming into the image of God. This is the church's kingdom mandate to help us to be unified in one mind. What mind is that? The mind of Christ. To help us to be unified with one vision. What vision is that? God's vision. To help us to, to judge the same way and to speak the same thing like Paul said to Corinthian church. How will we judge in the same thing and judge the same way and speak the same thing and mind the same things? How will we be unified? When we have the mind of Christ. So. So. Paul says, I came, brethren, and I came to you not with excellency of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined to know nothing, to not know anything among you save Jesus and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God kingdom lifestyle Paul preached the gospel of the kingdom which is the only true way of life he did not preach church membership he preached the good news of the kingdom the king's way this is why I say I'm not I don't have to put, join to be a member of any individual church if I am a part of the kingdom I am a member of every church that is in the kingdom so as being a member of the kingdom, I'm a member of churches in India. I'm a member of churches in Brazil. I'm a member of churches in the UK. I'm a member of churches in, in Russia. I'm a member of churches in Dominique. Wherever there is a church that the saints are part of the kingdom, I belong to that church. church Paul didn't preach church membership. He didn't preach the gospel of the churchdom, of the building up of one church. Of, to make it a super church he preached the gospel of the kingdom so me i'll never be restricted to being in one building in one assembly or one body of people i am a man of the kingdom i go where god sends me i ain't gonna sit in your church for 20 years if that's not what god has called me to do i'm a member of the kingdom i can go to any church and be a member and this is the mentality we need to have we are members of the kingdom now, if God's called you to sit in that church for 20 years, that's fine. That's no problem. But some people are so loyal to people and to systems, they would never allow God to, to help them to grow because they're loyal to a, a, a bishop or they're loyal to an elder or they're loyal to a church system. The kingdom of God calls and demands for us to fellowship outside of our, 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 our four walls. And it might call for you to go to another part of the kingdom as sir. But God help you if your mindset is limited that you have to sit in the same place your whole life. Please read the Bible again. Please read the Bible again. 
I'm not telling you to get up and leave your church or whatever. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying your mindset needs to be bigger than just sitting in your church every week and thinking that this is the kingdom. Your church is not the kingdom. The kingdom is God's agency to change the world. Right? Acts 14, 21 to 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many and returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the church? No. And that through much, much tribulation, we must enter into the kingdom of God. We must through tribulation to enter into this into this to become a citizen yeah to become a part of this nation a lot of tribulation happens yeah to 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 fully embrace this lifestyle it takes a lot but guess what it's worth it but paul didn't say through much tribulation you must enter the church some of us come from churches where it, they make any church that is making it like that they're the only church that's going to heaven it's a cult. Any church that has this superiority complex like they're better than anyone else, it's a cult. That's not, what, that's not what the Bible preached. The kingdom is bigger than your individual church. I don't care how much of the doctrine you've got right. The kingdom is bigger than your church. Citizenship covers all spheres of life, not just your location on a Sunday and your registration to events and participation to church programs. So you see, when I'm in the kingdom now, it doesn't matter how many church, how many convocations I go to. It doesn't matter how many events I register for. It doesn't matter how many meetings that I register for. The kingdom is concerned with all areas of my life because we have a lot of great performers who can, who can go to church and they can preach and they can perform in all of these big places, but they don't have no witness outside of the building. God has called me to a new life. He's not called me to a church life. He's not called me to perform in church. He's not called me to, 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 to look good on a Sunday and to look good in convocation and, and to make you think that I'm saved. God has called me into a kingdom. So therefore, the citizenship that I have affects every area of my life. I'm concerned about how I am at work. I'm concerned about how I am in the supermarket. I'm concerned about how I am um, in the boardroom, in the meeting office, in the shop, in the restaurant. The kingdom is dealing with all of my life. And so you've got a lot of people who they have climbed the ladder of church, but they've got no personal life. They have no witness. They could never win any of their friends to their friends to Christ because their life is disgusting and nasty. No, I'm sorry. This is what happens when you preach the church, when you preach the churchdom, and when you, when, you, when you preach the system of Christianity that has been handed down from the Catholic church. You preach the kingdom and you're preaching a transformed life, not just performance. There's a lot of church performance. Mr. Barbara, go ahead. Sorry, just quickly. Um, I agree with everything you said 100%. But I also agree with um, church membership. I'm not saying you can't belong to a church. That's not that's not my objection. My objection is, is that if I belong to a church, that's not to the exclusion of me being, being able to go to other churches or to fellowship with other churches or to see that my Christian journey might take me to another church. Because mm -hmm. my thing is, is that people have put church membership above the kingdom. I belong to a kingdom. I don't belong to I don't belong to one body of people. I belong to the body of Christ. Now, if you go but to a sorry. church and you're serving at a church, you need to be faithful. You you need mm -hmm. to you you should have a, a a relationship with your pastor and you should be um submitted to to the leaders. I'm not preaching against that, but what I'm saying is not to the exclusion of of being a part of the kingdom because you, the church is not above the kingdom. Because mm -hmm. Jesus didn't preach the gospel of the church. He preached the gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, I'm saying we need to change our mentality with regards to sometimes being so insular and to thinking that 
it's all about church. No, it's all about God and it's all about his kingdom. Right. And church yeah. comes under that. And church is a product of that. But it, church is not the kingdom. That's my point. Okay. okay. Who has their hand up? Go on, Sister Bula. Yeah, so and, um, just to add to that, would you agree that um, even through your church membership, if you are you know, involved in other um kingdom initiatives and things that you would keep your pastor informed or you know we'd be connected because you wouldn't want to be seen as yeah obviously you wouldn't you wouldn't go and just do your own thing and because your pastor, yeah. the pastor is there to be your covering the pastor is there to, well i don't want to use that word covering the pastor is there to watch over you and to watch over your soul yeah so i'm not preaching um that you need to uh, be disorderly. And if you watch all of the YAM videos, I don't preach disorder. So anything you are going to do, you should get the, the blessing of the man of God because he can pray for you and he can, and he can bless what you're, you know, he can give you direction into what you're doing. And any good pastor is not going to have an issue with you taking part in other, you know, ministries that are a part of the kingdom. What a pastor is there to tell you is actually you should, you know, be careful of that because remember, part of the church's uh, role is so that you will not be uh, blown around by every wind of doctrine. So the church has a responsibility to tell you, no, not that church because they preach error. Or not that church because they're not even in the kingdom. So that's where you, you, you know, you, a good pastor will be able to guide you and say, yeah, go and take part in this. Actually, I don't want you to be a part of that because that's not good. That's why we have elders and leaders because sometimes well in but well, not sometimes for the most part they should have greater insight than us in in certain areas and so i've put here our way of living our way of living is the most impactful and powerful sermon we could ever preach paul operated in power and through a powerful and though a powerful preacher he understood to be effective, the believer must, above all, walk the walk and not just talk the talk. Yeah? The biggest sermon we preach is our way of life. The most impactful testimony we have is the way we live. What does the world want? What does the world cry out for? Strong families. What should the world see when they look at the church? Strong families. What should the world see when they see a church? Community of people. What should the world see when they see the church? People who love each other as Christ loved them. Because what did he say? By this, the world, you will know you are Christ's disciples. Not by all of the evangelism programs, not even by all of the people you, the poor people you feed. Actually, it's going to be demonstrated by the way you love one another. The way we live our lives should make people jealous. The Bible talks about the Gentiles making the Jews jealous. People should envy the way we live. And this is my point about kingdom over church. The church often is just trying to get you into heaven, but it's often not trying to tell you you need to live heaven now. It's, it's all, a lot of it, it's just pointing to what's next. No, it's about what's now, because Jesus said, occupy till I come. We have to live in this present world and we have to live the kingdom way. And when we preach the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, like Jesus and Paul did, we won't have to worry so much about people changing when they come outside of the church. People who dress one way in church, dress one way outside of church. People who talk one way in church, talk another way outside of the church. We won't have to worry about that because when we preach this as a lifestyle, then their, 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 their church life and their, their life outside of church or outside of the building will be synonymous. And this is what happens when you don't do things the Bible way. You have problems that you shouldn't have. Because if we preached a lifestyle, we wouldn't have to be worrying about what happened when people leave the building. Because this is the life we live. This is not just something we do on a Sunday. A lot of my friends, when I got saved, thought it was just, I just went to church. It was something I did on a Sunday. So they thought I could go to the party with them. I said, my life has been changed. I don't want to party with you no more. I don't want to drink no more. I don't want all these women anymore. I've been changed. Church is not something I do. Church is something I am. 
My body is the temple of the living God. I am the habitation of God through the spirit. So my temple has to be clean. I need the presence of God to abide with me. This is the way Jesus, and this is the way Paul was preaching. There was preaching about the way. And we have lost ourselves somewhere and we've just been preaching to people about church. This is the way. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. People need their lives transformed. They don't need somewhere to go on Sunday. They need their mind change so that they see that the, the, the gathering of the saints is something that they need. Do you see the difference? I'm not inviting you to church. I'm inviting you to a new way of life. Because when I invite you to the new way of life, you're going to see you need to be in prayer meeting. You're going to see you need to gather with the saints because you, you get strength from that. This is the difference. This is why people, when they come to church, we try to conform them to our way. And then when they leave our church, they go back, they go and pick up something else because their minds wasn't transformed. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Not be ye conformed. I don't want to be in a church of conformers. I want to be in a church full of people who are transformed. Conformed people, as soon as they leave your church, their doctrine changes, the way they look changes, the way they dress changes, the way they talk changes. When, when transformed people are in your church, wherever they go, they keep the standard that they know they have. They don't, cha they don't, they don't change their standard according. I, my standard hasn't changed according to the church I've gone. The same standard I had in my father's church, I had in the church I went to after that. I had a church in the went to after that. I had a church in the went to after that. Why? Because I belong to a nation. I'm a citizen. I have a passport which means that I am accountable to God. I know the word. I know what the word expects of me. So whatever church I go into, I don't change. Unless the Lord tells me to change because I am a part of a nation. I have a constitution. The Bible God governs the way I live, not the church I go to. This is the kingdom of God. This is what the, this is the life transforming gospel that they were turning the world upside down with. They weren't preaching church. They were preaching kingdom. The king's authority, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Paul says that our faith should, that your faith should not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Our faith should not rest in the personality or the wisdom of men, but God's power. The apostle wasn't planting churches and establishing ministries in his own image or based on his own personality. God was the visionary the leader, the cause, and the power behind all that he did. True apostles, true pastors point you to God, not to themselves or to their ability. The preacher must preach the mind of Christ. We have come to the end of today. We're not